Well, hello and good day and uh, welcome to another edition of Digging Deeper. I'm glad to be with you as always. And uh, this is, of course, designed, and well, maybe this is your first time with us, doubtful, but if it is, uh, this is designed, this video is designed to be a remote facilitation for a small group Bible study. And, and, it, and these Bible studies are based around the message that was uh, given at Life Point Church on Sunday morning. And so the purpose of this is to really help uh, those who want to discuss in a deeper way, a little, little uh, more depth about the topic that was presented on Sunday. And so that's what we're doing this morning, and we're continuing in a series called The War Chronicles, and uh, today we're going to be looking um, at a, a passage uh, that is, is about, we're going to be looking at a passage that is about uh, God's, um, God's dealings with the, the nation of Israel, about his his work in them, and uh, it's going to be uh, a, a extension of what was taught on Sunday, which is about uh, the the encounter between David and Goliath. And so, uh, glad to have you along with us. Some of you may be watching this by yourselves. That is fantastic too. You can certainly profit from that. What I encourage you to do, in either case, is I will give opportunities after I ask the questions for you to pause. And when I pause, I would like you to discuss that among yourselves if you're in a group or if you're by yourself just think through the answer to the question see what you come up with okay well let's get started what did you like in the message these first three questions you only have had to have listened to the message to be able to answer these no right or wrong answers these are personal opinion questions but what did you like in the message was there something that you particularly appreciated from the message on sunday take a moment discuss that with each other or uh, think through that and maybe scribble some thoughts down on a piece of paper and pause the video here and we'll be back in a moment. All right, second question. Second question, what did you disagree with in the message? What did you disagree with in the message? Now, disagree is a little bit of a strong word. Maybe it is uh, something that you just found that was not clear in the message, something that just didn't make sense to you. Uh, whatever that situation is, I encourage you to take a moment and uh, to to uh, pause the video here and just talk that out. Maybe somebody in your group, if you're with some other people, can can help you to figure that out, uh, clarify what was what was confusing for you in the message. Or if you're by yourself, maybe just applying a little thought to that or thinking about some other scriptures related to that or, or your question may provide some clarity. Take a moment, pause the video. We'll be back in a moment. Okay, third question. Third question is, what do you remember the most from the message? What do you remember the most from the message? There might have been something that really stood out to you, something very significant that um, that leapt out at you after you or as you were listening to the message. Well, what was that? I mean, what was the thing that uh, really stuck in your mind as a result of having listened to this message? Take a moment and share that with uh, your group. It could have been the uh, bottom line or it could have been something else, but whatever it is in the message, share that or write that down and help it uh, be cemented in your mind. Pause the video here. Okay. Um, well, a couple questions. These are kind of the ice-breaking questions, or they're called my story, and so uh, not necessarily any kind of right or wrong answers on these, but these are just questions to get us talking or thinking about the topic. So the first question is this, how do you feel about conflict? How do you feel about conflict? Are you comfortable with it or do you flee from it? Let me ask that question again. How do you feel about conflict? Are you comfortable with it or do you flee from it? Take a moment and discuss that as a group or think through that as an individual. Well, I'll tell you, I am very conflict adverse. Um, you know, that just personality thing there. Uh, but I would, I would rather flee than fight. Typically, um, in, in fact, what I'll do is, if, if I've got uh, an issue with somebody, a lot of times I will rationalize 
uh, why they did what they did instead of having a difficult conversation. Instead of, instead of addressing the issue with a person, sometimes I'll try to think, well, there has to be a reason for what, why they did what they did or why, why things turned out the way they did. And so I will, uh, I will try to rationalize that and, and uh, just talk myself into, or talk, really, uh, to, to be more clear, I'll talk myself out of uh, a, a hard conversation with somebody if I'm not careful. And so um, I rationalize a person's actions is what I'll end up doing instead of addressing that with the person, which is not healthy, uh, obviously. That's not a good way to do that. But if I allow indulge my tendencies, that is the way I trend. And uh, so, and along with that, you know, you, I can be very passive aggressive. And I bet you there's others of us who are, that are watching this video that are in the same situation to a greater or lesser degree. So second question here, uh, how do you deal with conflicts in your life? How do you deal uh, with conflicts in your life? Take a moment and discuss that and we will, uh, we will talk about that. Well, I don't know how you deal with conflicts in your life, but I, I would say, uh, again, I used this, this word just a moment ago, but I think that historically and sadly, I have been passive aggressive with a lot of things. You know, I'll kind of let the pressure build up and up and up and up until uh, it, uh, you know, I explode. And that is never a healthy thing. That's not a good way to deal with things. But um, that's how I've dealt with it. Now, is that how I should deal with the conflict in my life or deal with uh, conflicts in my life? Absolutely not. You know, I think a difficult conversation is the best thing to do. You know, you, you talk to somebody and say, hey, uh, you did this and, um, you know, I, I want to talk through that and understand why you did that. Maybe gain some understanding instead of a, dump, a jumping, to, uh, jumping to assumptions. In fact, this morning, you know, I was, I was having all kinds of apprehension in my life because I, or in my heart because there was uh, somebody that I was going to have to uh, talk to and I thought, oh no, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to interact with this person and, and I, I felt like there was a conflict brewing. And uh, so it, it turned out that it worked just fine. But, uh, you know, there, there's this apprehension in me. And so some people uh, are really, really struggle with that and I'm one of those. So uh, I think many of us do though. Okay, second, or they get into the digging deeper part of the, uh, of the study here. Uh, read Exodus 14, one through 14. So we're gonna read Exodus 14, one through 14. We'll take a look at that. Take a moment and read that. Uh, it's, it's a little longer passage, so maybe you'll um, not, not be able to read it in, in too many versions, but maybe, maybe sit down and read it in a couple versions if you want for a little extra clarity. But uh, read Exodus 14, 1 through 14, and we'll be back momentarily. All right, Exodus 14, 1 through 14. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel to turn back and encamp in front of Pi Haharoth, between Migdal and the sea in front of Baal Zephon, you shall camp and camp facing it by the sea. So Pharaoh, for Pharaoh will say to the people of Israel, they are wandering in the land, the wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and I will pursue them and they, I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And they did so. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the mind of Pharaoh and his servants was changed toward the people. And they said, What is this we have done that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariot and took his army with him and took 600 chosen chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, when he pursued the people of Israel while the people of Israel were going out defiantly. The Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them and camped at the sea by Pihaharoth in front of Baal Zephon. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly, and the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. And they said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done in, to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. <clears throat> 
Okay, so that's uh, Exodus chapter 14, 1 through 14. First question here, what was God's involvement in Pharaoh's pursuit of Israel? Uh, is God involved in the conflicts we face? So there's two questions there. What was God's involvement in Pharaoh's pursuit of Israel? Is God involved in the conflicts that we face? Take a moment and uh, we'll discuss that. Okay, so a couple of uh, questions there, right? For So what was God's involvement in Pharaoh's pursuit of, of uh, Israel? What was, what was God's involvement? Well, take a look. If you take a look back here at verse 4 uh, in the chapter, it says, um, and God, God is announcing this in advance. He says, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will pursue them and I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And they did so. It says, I will harden Pharaoh's heart. Now, that could lead us into a lot of tricky, tricky uh, thorn bushes there if we're not careful. And I don't want to go into all those. But what I'm going to say is that I, I think what was happening here is God was confirming and passing sentence on what uh, Pharaoh's attitude was toward him and the Israelites. And basically, God was saying, have it your way. You know, in Romans chapter 1, we read that God gave them over, God gave them over, God gave them up, talking about humanity um, and, and their, their rejection of the truth. I think that's really what was happening here with Pharaoh, is God said, is this what you want? This is what you want, Pharaoh. Then, then this is what I'm going to confirm, and I'm go I'm just going to let you uh, a, a go as as far away and as much into rebellion as as you want, and just 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 gave him up. Uh, so yeah, it, God was in. But what was God's involvement? God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Now, uh, so is God involved in the conflicts that we face? Well. Uh, it, well, before I get to it, let me just say this. God's glory, when, with God hardening Pharaoh's heart, God's glory is his highest pursuit. You notice he says in that passage that he's going to get glory for himself. And so that is that is God's emphasis in Scripture. In fact, that's the thing that is the most important thing uh, of all with regard to who God is, is he desires his glory above all else. And so consequently, our purpose should be to give God glory above all else. In fact, there's a, um, you know, a passage in 1 Corinthians 10. It says, whatever, whatever you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. And so that is the, the biggest thing that we can possibly do. That's the highest pursuit we can, we can go after. And so uh, the question, second question is, is God involved? And that's what God was doing with Pharaoh. Is God involved in the conflicts that we face? Well, yes, he is. Um, so whatever trials, whatever difficulties we face of any kind, God is the gatekeeper, right? He is the gatekeeper for our trials. Nothing happens to us that God doesn't allow. God allows everything that happens in our lives. He is, he is the one who has sovereign control over those things. And so if something happens to us, a conflict enters our life or a, a hardship enters our life or a battle enters our life, that is something that God has permitted to come into our lives. And it doesn't slip past him, and he doesn't miss it. It's something that uh, he is allowing to come and uh, for us to experience. And really a great verse to remember in this connection is Romans 8.28, right? For, um, which says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Um, so, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Uh, we recognize that the good, the bad, the ugly, whatever happens in our life is something that God can use for good, that he allows into our lives for his purposes and for his glory, just as he did in this situation with Israel and Pharaoh. The next question, how does the response of the Israelites relate to some to how we sometimes respond to adversity in our life? Let me ask that question again. How does the response of the Israelites relate to how we sometimes respond to adversity in our life? Take a moment and um, think about that, right? Or if you're by yourself, write down some thoughts on that, and we'll come back and, and answer that in just a moment.
Okay, um, so how does the response of the Israelites relate to how we sometimes respond to adversity in our life? Well, um, I, I think that we can see this, a similar response in our lives. If you look here at verse 10, um, it, at verse 10 it says, um, When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, <clears throat> and they feared greatly, and the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. And so, you know, you have experienced hardship, adversity in your life of varying degrees. I have too. Uh, fear is often a response. It's often a natural response that we we will we will fear what is happening to us. We'll it will cause alarm in our lives and we'll become afraid of what's going to happen to us and what's going on. But not just fear, you know, there's another, there's another response that mirrors our own here in 11 through 12. Uh, it says, and they said to Moses, it is because there is no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness. What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. So, not only do you see fear on the part of the uh, Israelites, you also see this complaining, right? This complaining attitude. Uh, they complain uh, because uh, they are there, they are in a, in a between a rock and a hard place, as it were. They're trapped, and so they are complaining about their situation. Do we do that? <laughs> well, yes. I can't speak for you, but I sure do. Um, and so. Uh, you, you've got you've got them responding in, to this this hardship or this adversity with fear and with complaining. And uh, what would have been the appropriate response? Well, the appropriate response would have been faith, right? For them to believe that God was working something out, God had a plan, God was doing something, and to trust Him through that. But that is not what they did. They they instead um, complained and feared. Uh, and we often do the same things. Next question, how does Moses' instruction to Israel to be still relate to how we deal with battles in our life? Let me ask that again. How does Moses' instruction to Israel to be still relate to how we deal with battles in our life? Take a moment and discuss that as a group or uh, think through that on your own uh, what, and see what you come up with there as far as um, how, uh, how we respond to uh, to, to tr de deal with battles in our life, how Moses' instruction helps us. Take a moment. All right, well, we can only do so much, right? We can, uh, we, can, we, we can try to do different things when we face a conflict, when we face a trial, when we face a difficulty in our life. Um, there's, there's different things that we can do, right? We can, we can um, seek treatment for a health challenge, uh, if we've got a, a health problem, we can go to a doctor, we can, we can seek out a specialist, um, it, it, and that's natural. That's what we would do, and it's reasonable what we would do. Um, if we have fa family troubles, we might seek out a counselor or a therapist, um, and, th and that's right. That's a good thing to do. That's, that's a healthy thing to do if there's a family dispute. If we have a car problem, we'll, we'll go to find a mechanic, right? We'll go to try to find a, somebody that knows how to fix cars and how to how they can uh, address that issue um but here's the here's the thing so there's nothing wrong with any of those things finding a mechanic for your car problems finding a therapist for your family problems or personal problems uh or finding a uh a, a treatment for a health uh, treatment for your your uh, your mechanic or your mechanic i think i said that already uh whatever these things are um whatever these issues are you can you can do that, and we should do that, right? We should pursue, um, use the tools that God's given us, basically, as He's allowed us. But this is the significant thing: is after we, and during the time we do that, and while we do that, we should be depending on the Lord through it all, right? So we should be depending on God, even when we're going taking the car to the mechanic, even when we're going to the doctor, even when we're um, talking to the counselor, uh, whatever those things are, and. <clears throat> many others that I didn't mention, uh, when we're facing those difficult times, um, we're called to depend upon the Lord, not just look to these uh, people that can help us or look to others that can uh, see what we can do for ourselves. 
um, it's it's that we depend upon the Lord and um, what He wants, uh, what He's wanting to do in us, and trusting Him and recognizing that unless He brings it about, it will not happen. Eventually, we run out of options, right? And uh, eventually, you know, you, you, whether it's whatever the problem is, uh, especially like a health problem or something like that, or a family problem, maybe uh, we just pursue everything we can, and eventually we hit a wall, and we can't do anything more. Well, uh, you know, that, that is when we are forced to depend on the Lord, or, or I guess we can still refuse to depend on the Lord, but that's when we recognize, hey, we, we, we are dependent on the Lord, even though you, we've been dependent on the Lord the whole time. And we can only look to the Lord to intervene because we've run out of options. So it's so important that uh, it, from the get-go, from the start, we depend on the Lord. Even if we think we can figure this out on our own, to recognize that without his intervention, unless he builds a house, we labor in vain that build it. We need uh, him desperately. We have to have his intervention. Last question here. Um, <clears throat> how do we know when to fight and how do we know when to be still? Let me ask that again. How do we know when to fight and how do we know when to be still? And you notice I'm getting that from um, the last uh, verse in this. It says, verse 14, Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for you and you have only to be silent. Okay, so the uh, question is, uh, you know, how do we know when to fight and how do we know when to be still? Take a moment, pause the video, and be back in a moment. Well, it's not either or, okay? It's not either or, it is a both and thing here. Um, so it's kind of like asking, you know, when we ask, uh, should we fight or should we be still? Uh, it's kind of like asking, well, which wing of the airplane is most important? Well, we both, we want both of them, right? Um, and so it's not either or, it's both and. We work, you know, there, there used to be a, uh, and it goes back to, you know, we, we, we still, we wait, we depend on the Lord, but we also do what we can. Uh, it, it goes back to a, a core value that we used to talk a lot about it here at LifePoint. And it goes like this. Work like it depends on you. Pray like it depends on God. And uh, that might seem a little simplistic, but I, I really think there's something profound there. That we, when we come up against anything in life, um, ministry, whatever it is, we, we work like it depends on us, but we pray like it depends on God. And so uh, how important it is for us to recognize that uh, unless God does the work, unless he enables it, it is going to be a failure. You know, Jesus said when he was talking to his disciples, apart from me, you can do nothing. And so to recognize that we are totally dependent on the Lord for every breath, everything, and to depend on him, but not to just sit and be inactive and just wait for him to do everything for us, but instead to be um, intentional, to be active, to do what we know to do all the while depending on him and trusting him for his guidance and his direction. Well, I hope that has been a help. I hope there's maybe some interesting thoughts in here, maybe some angles you haven't considered before. And um, I'm glad to have you with me uh, again. And uh, let's, let's go ahead and we're going to pray and then we will uh, wrap up our time. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for this uh, message from Exodus, and that we, in this book, we uh, we encounter this, your people who are in a very difficult spot, very difficult place, and yet you intervened, you delivered, you helped uh, when they were in a terrible situation. And so, Father, we pray that you would help us to um, depend on you throughout life, but to also take the initiative to act, like David did when he uh, was fighting Goliath, that he took the initiative but at the same time, he depended upon you. Uh, we pray that we would do that instead of turning to fear, instead of turning to complaining when we come up against hard things, that we would respond in faith and dependence on you. It's in Jesus' name that we ask these things. Amen. All right, well, you have a great week. I, we will uh, be back with you for another edition, with you for another edition of Digging Deeper next time. And uh, thank you again for spending this time with us. Take care.